All right. I hesitate to say this because so far, every time that I thought I knew where I thought something was going, I was totally wrong. So, I hesitate to say that I think I know what's going on now. <laughs> um, because, like I said, they, they do a very good job of keeping you guessing, um, but it feels like it's leading up, it's finally hit that moment in the season where things are finally coming to the climax, and so the next, the final two episodes are just going to be epic. Um, but yeah, there, there are three main stories going on right now. You've got the stuff with the hand, you've got stuff with stick, and then you've got the blacksmith. Um, those are the three stories going on. Whether or not they connect, I still don't know. Um, like I said before, I really, really hope they don't connect, just because it would be really interesting to have Daredevil trying to deal with all three of these things at once. Um, instead of just, oh, it all connects in the end, they're all behind it together. It, that would just be really dumb to me. You know, it feels like a, a bit of a cop-out, instead of really telling a good story where the, the hero has to really put himself to the test. Um... <clears throat> the stuff with Stick, though, is kind of, it's not the least interesting, but it's the least amount of information given. Uh, we knew that he sent the guy after Elektra in the last episode. She killed that guy. And, you know, the the two guys that work for Stick, you know, come see him. And they're like, she killed the Frenchman. He's like, Jacques. He always it got in over his head or something like that. Um... And so he knows that uh, Elektra is likely going to come for him now. And so he sends the two guys out to go get her, to which they hop in the car, and <laughs> they get stabbed. Um, and then what's really impressive is that the one guy manages to stay alive enough, or long enough, to make it to Matt's house and tell him that <laughs> Elektra is going to kill Stick. But it ends with, you see Stick, like... <clears throat> sharpening his sword and then Electra kicks down the door she's like we need to talk and then he makes a joke he says I'm all ears because he can't see <laughs> that was a bad joke anyway <clears throat> but yeah so that's that's going on and I think it's going to take the forefront for right now because it's happening right now the other two are kind of still in the background haven't really caught <clears throat> I gotta stop eating the salted nuts could scratches my throat and I can't talk during reviews. Um, but the, the other two storylines with the blacksmith and with uh, Nobu in the hand are kind of, they're about to start happening. Uh, the stuff with the blacksmith took center stage for this one, but there's still a little bit more left there because uh, we still don't know who the blacksmith is. Um, that's the one I'm going to talk about next. Very interesting to see... Karen really starting to to feel like she can do stuff on her own. You know, she doesn't... She was the one that Matt and Foggy were both just like, you know what, our friendship is done, the firm is done. And she's like, no, we need to try to do what we can to keep us afloat. She was the one that had hope for a little while when they didn't. And now even she's just like, I don't need you guys, I'm going to go do this on my own. Um... You know, Matt's trying to help her. She's like, I don't need your protection. So it is it is interesting to see her kind of, even now she's given up hope for them reuniting. Um, does, so I, I still want to say that at the end of this season, they're going to be able to work through it, especially after the conversation that she and uh, Frank had in this episode. Frank's telling telling her that, she loves Matt, and she's like, no, I don't, He he's a person that hurts people, he breaks people down, and he's just like, that bullshit, you know, like, goes off on this little speech, which was really, really good, talking about how it's the people that we love that are the ones that hurt us, you know, if, if he has the ability to hurt you like that, that means he's close to you, that means you care for him, because, you know, what, I would cut off my own, own arm just to be hurt by my wife again, you know, like, to, 
have somebody close like that that could hurt me. So that was a very good speech, and it makes me think that in the end they are all going to be able to come together, um, Matt, Foggy, and Karen. They're all going to work it out and figure out how to solve their differences. Um, I think Karen may figure out about Matt being Daredevil at the at the end, possibly. Maybe they're saving that for a later season, but it feels like it's slowly leading there. Like she's getting tired of Matt's lies. I feel like he's going to have to come clean to her uh, if he wants to keep her. <clears throat> so, but the blacksmith stuff is interesting in this one because Karen is now working with the Punisher. She escapes her police protection. Um, it's kind of funny because the scene in the diner, she's been talking about how she doesn't approve of what he does, but she understands it. Uh, but then when she actually sees it firsthand, she's like, oh god, I made a horrible mistake. You know, like she's almost puking because of how gruesome it is. And they do a very good job with the special effects on these people. I mean, when he bashes the guy's face in with a gun and he's got like a piece of his cheek hanging off and it's like cut open, I'm like, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't get grossed out by that stuff much. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so he figures out about the blacksmith's location. Meanwhile, Matt is going on and figuring out stuff from a vigilante's point of view. You know, he talks to Blake Tower from the DA's office, finds out about this, um, like this group of people who are going against the blacksmith uh, heroin operation, finds out that it's Madame Gao, like seeing her back because she was Aside from the Kingpin, she was probably, well, the Kingpin and Wesley, because Wesley was awesome. She was my favorite of all the people working for Kingpin, uh, because she, <laughs> she she didn't seem like much, and it was really funny whenever they were speaking Chinese, and then Wesley saying stuff about her, thinking she doesn't understand English, and then all of a sudden she speaks English. <laughs> it's just like, you've been able to speak English this entire time. She was She was really... You could tell she was devious and she was evil, but she also was one of the more fun villains of the first season. Um, so I was glad to see her back, but she gives Matt information about the blacksmith because she wants the blacksmith stopped too. Matt gets there just in time as Frank's about to blow a guy's head away who's claiming to be the blacksmith, but Matt's just like, no, he's lying. And then, you know, they fight while the guy calls for backup. Finally, Matt gets through to Frank uh, and gets him to stop and then says something I don't know if he meant or if it's just how he feels right now, so overwhelmed that he just, ha <laughs> he says, you know what, I, I did it wrong, but maybe you're right, M maybe, maybe your way is what it needs right now. And Frank's just like, whoa, hey, <laughs> whoa. It's kind of funny because Frank was trying so hard to get him to cross over earlier on in the season. But now that he's actually saying that maybe you are right, Frank's just like, whoa, dude. Once you cross that line, you don't come back from that. Um, it's kind of funny to see him sort of change his mind about it. But sure enough, he, you know, there are a bunch of explosives on the on the boat, so the backup shows... And he's like, we, Matt says, we need to get off. And he's just like, yeah, you do. Punches Matt, throws him off the ship, shoots at him a little bit to get them to shoot back, just to make it look like he dies. I'm smarter than you, show. I know what you're doing. I think, hey, if they don't show me a body, the Punisher's still alive. I've learned a lot of things about TV shows. That is one, unless I see a dead body... Well, even if I see a dead body, if it's on DC, they'll bring him back to life somehow. But on Marvel, if we don't see... Well, they brought Nick Fury back to life and we saw his dead body. He's not dead. I'm calling it right now. I'm staking my claim. Not dead. I, I believe he's not dead. Now, whether or not they'll show us that in this season or wait till next season to bring him back, I don't know. But he's not dead. Just wait. Just wait. Anyway. <clears throat> um, 
so that ends, and then you've also got stuff going on with the hand. Uh, obviously, they attack at the beginning of this episode. Um, they end up killing one of the nurses that was Claire's friend, which kind of sucks for her. Uh, but they get these uh, five people back that Matt rescued. I don't think he rescued them. I think they were there. Maybe, maybe they got kidnapped at first, but it's very clear that they wanted to go back. Um, so the hand gets them back. Matt tries to fight them off, but does not succeed. Claire ends up killing um, one of them. She, like, knocks him out the window, and he falls and dies. And that's when they see he's already been through an autopsy. So, just like Matt found out about Nobu, this immortality thing is actually real. You know, there's something to it. Um, so, they get those people back. Uh, we see them in some other basement. Uh, the kid who killed his dad. And I, I can't remember his name. I think his name was Stan. Anyway, um, but he, the, the kid killed Stan. And uh, he's... They're kind of focusing on him because we knew his father. <laughs> so it's like they're making him out to be the most important of these five. I'm just like, we only barely knew his father and he was working for the, like, we knew his dad had his, you know, his son kidnapped. And why are you making him out to be such an important character? Anyway, but he looks at him and he's like, I'm ready. And then Nobu like, cuts his wrist open and he starts bleeding into a coffin looking thing and they have this other coffin looking thing over there and uh, Nobu looks at um, the I forget his name now it was the one that um, Stan accused him of being Yakuza and he's like I'm not Yakuza and that's when it was like oh it's the hand he looks at that guy and says it's ready now so I feel like Next episode, we're going to finally find out what they're doing. What is the point of all this? What have they been building up to? We're going to realize this. We're going to figure it out. I'm excited to see that. Um, I'm excited to see whatever it is they have inside that coffin-shaped thing. I feel like it's going to be some sort of superhero. Like, well, not superhero, supervillain. Um, some sort. And it's just going to like come out of there and try to wreck stuff. And then Matt's just going to be like, I can't handle this alone. And then in steps the other defenders. I really want them to do that. Why, why, why aren't they do? Maybe they will. Anyway. But yeah, you know, we got two episodes left. Um, but it really feels like they they know what they're doing. It, it feels that way. Like, some shows that I watch, it feels like they don't know what they're doing. It feels like one episode is great, the other one's bad, the other one's okay. It's just like you... It feels like you're just kind of going through the motions. You don't really have a, a main story to tell. You're just, oh, let's give them this episode, and then this episode, and then, oh, yeah, let's go back to our main story. This one, obviously, is a lot easier to do because it's just 13 episodes. Let's tell a story. And they do it very well. They pace it very well. You really do get attached to the characters. That scene in the diner, I love scenes like that in this show because we can have scenes like that. You can't normally. You can't normally have a scene like that in a regular TV show because you have to rush through the information. Whereas in this, you don't really have to. You have plenty of time to work with it. You have time to kind of figure out what you want to do. So there's time for the character development. There's time for the character growth. Um... So it's it's very well done, and I really enjoy it for that. So two more episodes, I'm going to get through them, get through the reviews. I'm excited. I can't, can't wait to see what's coming. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more Daredevil, and I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.